Welcome to this channel, guys. And I want to say something categorically. Looking at William Ruto, his time to leave Jubilee Party is late. There is a hit that is coming, there is a report that is coming that he has directed all the Jubilee members of parliament who are willing and are ready to be part of the UDA to resign from Jubilee. According to the constitution, they have until 26th March to resign. If they will be still in Jubilee, then they will not cross over or rather they will not vie with UDA but will have to stick in Jubilee. I'm saying this because if perhaps he's trying to pull a 2002 during the Kanu, clamor for Kanu, or the 2005 that led to the birth of ODM, then I think his timing is poor. William Ruto has fought many battles. It started over with ICC. Then when ICC vanished, it is not yet still over. He came and fought the tag corruption and actually overexposure. If they stole, then it was overexposure. Then he came and fought Building Bridges Initiative in the second term of the administration. And guys, he also came and fought Jubilee Party and is fighting Raila Odinga and is now fighting President Uhuru Kenyatta. I think it is his time to say it's a wrap. Because after directing the members of Jubilee Party, members of Parliament, to leave and join UDA, the question that Kenyans are going to ask is how about him? Otherwise, it will be hypocritical. After these MPs are going to leave, what next to their party leader or their patron, William Samoy Ruto? If you're watching this video for the first time in guys and will not subscribe, take a second and subscribe. As also click the notification bell as we look into the possibility of William Ruto resigning after the members of parliament resigned from Jubilee Party. And again, what is his game plan? Ruto have realized that the president mentioned he wanted to revamp Jubilee Party. So some of the efforts of revamping Jubilee Party that President, uh, that President Uru Kenyatta brought on table was partly he was also going to sponsor some candidates who were going to vie with Jubilee. He was also going to do caucus discussions and other branding within the party. So William Ruto have realized that Jubilee Party is coming back to life. Then Uhuru Kenyatta is willing to use his resources to finance the people, aspirants, who are going to use Jubilee Party. Now, what William Ruto is trying to do now is to try to do what was done in 2002 when people walked out of Kanu because Moi was fronting the young Kenyatta to, pro to succeed him. So I want you to get this case. They have been pushing this narrative that Raila is a state project and is an Uhuru project. And I think they've mentioned that he's a Jubilee project. And that is what happened. That is the reason why Raila Dinga led Kanu walkout in 2002. Although there, Mdavadi, I think Ruto, remain, Ruto Mdavadi remained in Kanu because Mdavadi was Kenyatta's running mate. So they walked out and by that time, there was clamor for change. People had gotten tired with Kanu. Kanu had been in government for 24 years. Moi was not even interested in getting into power again and was ready to leave. And the country was breathing a change of government. Even in 2005, the reason why 
it was also very easy for Raila to consolidate the Pentagon. The Pentagon was formed. The momentum that Raila gained for campaigns was in 2005 after he said no to the Constitution, formed, they walked away, then formed the no campaign against Uru Kenyatta's, uh, against Mwai Kibaki's, yes. Then they formed, they got the momentum to campaign. Now, after a week long pushing this narrative of Raila Odinga as a state project, one thing they are going to do, because someone is going to ask, if the members of parliament that are allied to UDA now are leaving Jubilee, have been told to leave Jubilee because of betrayal, then the question is, why didn't they retire earlier? Why now? Because the president kept on telling them that if you are dissatisfied with the government, you are free to leave. I have three compelling reasons why I think William Ruto should follow suit and resign with these MPs the way he has ordered them. Number one, it is only until he resigns that he is going to get grip of the momentum, if that is what he is aiming at. When People, when, when, when Raila Odinga walked out of Kanu, he walked out and he was the Secretary General of Kanu. He was the Secretary General. So he walked out then, the rest followed. In 2005, after the referendum, I think it was 2006, after the referendum, he walked out and led and he was in government. After they were, I think after the referendum, the next day they were fired from the cabinet. The Uhuru Kenya, uh, Mwai Kibaki, uh, did their government reshuffle and after that cabinet reshuffle they walked away that was after Uhuru had uh, after Kibaki had lost in the referendum so my point here is guys for him to get that momentum he needs to walk away and again when he walks away from Jubilee party as much as it might be seen like running away from government Nikama Hataki alikuwa kwa serikali na katoka but then, that is when he can now come out and play the betrayal card smart. There is no way you can go out and say that I was in government, I was betrayed, I was chased, while you still work as a deputy, a deputy president. In fact, me, I don't buy that narrative of him saying he was chased. Because how was he chased? He's in government. He doesn't work. He earns a salary. He earns a salary there. So how was he chased? If he's to be chased. And so I think as much as he's putting his cards to the chest, but something he's not getting right. Another reason why he needs to walk away with the MPs is William Ruto needs to do the anti-Jubilee manifesto in his campaigns. That is what he there is a thin line between what he's doing and that. Now he goes somewhere and double speak. When he goes somewhere, government is a bit receptive. He says what government has done. When he went to a place where he realizes that people are hostile to the government, he sides with the opposition and starts saying, not even sides, but now start ridiculing the government. So if he walks away completely, he will disassociate from Jubilee achievement, then will play a fresh card saying what he's going to do, then negate what the government have done. For me, that is it. That is the clear picture of walk away so that you play your clear card. That you know what? What Uhuru have done in the second, what Uhuru have not done in the second term, I'm not responsible. I only worked with him in the first term. And so that is going to be good. Lastly, this might be a wrong one, but I think he can ponder around it. When Uhuru is when Ruto resigns. He's going to lose the state favors, the state machineries, the partly security, but he's going to be a presidential candidate, so he will get the security, will be guaranteed uh, some, some favors that he's been getting in government. And so when he is a bit exposed and his government is, he now doesn't campaign as a deputy president, you know, he's now going to be a hustler. 
Now we tell people, I'm hustling to get security. I'm hustling to get this. It will even now give him the image of a hustler. But a deep, a sitting deputy president cannot have a good image of a hustler. You still have security. You still have all those chess cars. And that is why I think that he needs to. That he also needs to give confidence. He needs to give these members of parliament confidence that he's fully in Jubilee, he's fully in Jubilee and he's behind them. But when he still ponders I'm in Jubilee, he still works. Guys, I think for me, someone should advise him. The best thing to do and gain this momentum is to resign and join Mudavadi and Wetangula so that both of them are coming from plain ground. There is no favor and they have walked out of government and now they are willing to hit the road. I know it's unpopular, but if you ask me, will he resign? Will he not? At some point, William Ruto will resign from government. Take that to bank. At some point, it might not be tomorrow as of the MPs, it might not be next month, but before general election, there are two things that will happen. If Uhuru does not have a handshake with Ruto before general election, if they totally don't agree, because I believe Uhuru might play the, because he's, he's someone who knows how to play the software politics and hardware politics. He might play the hardware politics for the camera and also have a handshake with William Ruto and tells him, I'm supporting Raila as head of Jubilee party. I have decided, but I don't have a problem with you. That would be that. If that doesn't happen, then what is going to happen is William Ruto will totally disassociate so that when he gets that government, he can hit the road and make sure that he is not a friend to Uhuru Kenyatta. 